You're listening to The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network, and this is Josh Michaelis and his last interview for the Houndsman XP Podcast. So you're going to want to tune into this. He captures a great interview with Nikki Hale. Nikki is a household name among competition coon hunters and Josh, and he will break down Nikki's story, some of the legendary dogs that Nikki has hunted, and the successes that he has had in competition coon hunting. Josh, again, thanks for everything that you've done for Houndsman XP, and we're going to miss you, buddy. Before we get to the interview, I want to tell you about free stuff. I know you guys and you all like to have free stuff, and we're going to give you an opportunity to win a Dakota G3 Medium Kennel. We have partnered with Go Wild the social media platform made by hunters, designed for hunters. You're not going to want to miss this. So this is how you get entered to win. You need to download the Go Wild app on your smartphone. You're going to set up an account. You're going to listen to the podcast, and then you're going to log your time on Go Wild. Every time you log time for listening to the Houndsman XP podcast from now until the end of June, you're going to get a chance to win this kennel. So the more times you listen, the more times your name goes in the hat. If you're not familiar with Go Wild, we just released an episode this week on Wednesday on the journey. Go back and check that out. If you guys are not using that app and that social media platform to showcase, log, uh, post your hunting adventures, you are missing it. It's all laid out. Brad Luttrell was on with Heath Hyatt this week. They did a super job of laying out what Go Wild is all about. Every time you log time, every time you make a post, you build points, you earn points, and those points turn into discounts. You can actually buy Garmin equipment on Go Wild at a discounted price. Nobody gives you a discount except Go Wild, and shipping is always free. So here's, a, here's what you got to do. Here's the breakdown. Download the app, set up an account, listen to the podcast, and then post that time on Go Wild. The more times you listen, the more times you get entered to win, time to go wild. Another announcement. It is time for you competition coon hunters to get in the game. That's right. It seems like the most popular things to do these days is to call people out, and I am calling you out. You've been listening to the truth. You've been enjoying the truth. You've been downloading it like crazy. I've been out there hunting for a new host because you guys like this thing so much, and I'm going to tell you how you can support it. If you go to our website at houndsmanxp.com and click the support tab, it will take you to our Patreon page, and you can start supporting us on Patreon. Yeah, it sounds like a shameless plug, but I'm going to pay you back for your support. We've got a monthly drawing for our Patreon supporters that includes gear from Briar Creek Hunting Supply, Cajun Lights. I'm proud to announce that Havoc just came on board with us. We've got tons of gear that we give away every month that is relative to your lifestyle. So you can go to Patreon and support us. Another way that you can support us is leave us a review. You're in your podcast app anyway, listening to this thing. So just click on the review button and leave us a five-star review and write a line or two. Hey, we enjoy the truth. Thanks for bringing us the truth. We like the content. Just a short couple lines will do wonders. We appreciate you. Let's get this podcast rocking and rolling with Nikki Hale and Josh Michaelis. Welcome to The Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network, and today we are lucky enough to be joined by my friend and truck hunt semifinalist now after last night, Nikki. Yep. With all up, Nikki Hale. Nikki, thanks for joining me, buddy. Yeah, appreciate you. Hey, uh, well, let's start it off just like I do all the others. Uh, how'd you get your start? When did you, when did you first start hunting, Nikki? Uh probably 12 13 year old something like that my dad always coon hunted and yeah just ever since i was real little just wanted to coon hunt do you remember your first hunt mm, not 
Competition? No, just regular old coon hunting. Not really. Yeah. I, that long ago? Not, yeah, I just, <laughs> I mean, they was all pretty much the same. Yeah. I yeah. hunted for, I went hunting with a buddy of my dad's a little bit and treated a few coons. And uh, then when I got my own dog, I really didn't hunt with nobody. I hunted pretty much a year by myself, yeah. never treated a coon. <laughs> a year by yourself Tre and never treated a Never treated, hunted about every night, just no. a kid. What, what kind of dog was it? He was a uh, he's he's actually a really good bred dog. He was out of a dog called uh, let me think of his name now, uh, Spring Creek Radar. Yeah, is what he yeah. was out of. He uh, like I say, my my dad's friend was a coon hunter, drank beer, <laughs> done that kind of thing. But anyway, yeah. this dog barked a lot, and he had about a half drunk one night went out there and kicked him, beat around on him, broke his back end, never did hunt him, yeah. and uh, gave him to me, and. Uh, I started hunting him, and he, like I say, I hunted him about a year before he ever treated a coon. But he did. Tree yeah, he did treat a coon. Yeah, I may, I, of course, I didn't go to no hunts much. He's he's the first one I hunted in a hunt. Yeah. Uh, we went to a few UKC hunts locally, one or two a year. Yeah. I think I liked one win, getting him granted out. No kidding. Yeah, I hunted him, I was 12, 13 when I got him. I hunted him till I, the year I graduated high school. Yeah. I pretty much don't. I had a couple other dogs I yeah. played with, but he was my main dog. And and uh, first hunt I put him in rent me. Really? I mean, that was I was rent. UKC hunt. UKC hunt. Went Did, to a hunt. Didn't know nothing. Yeah. Just tickled to be there. Yeah. And brought some really good guys, good dogs. Know them today, older fellas. But uh, I just kind of rode their coattails and end of the hunt they took a bunch of minus but trying to beat each other and i'm yeah. sitting there just a little scared kid <laughs> wind up winning the cast with 25 plus so you won the first cast you put that dog in sure first did. cast you were in mm -hmm. yeah won the whole hunt of course a first place win back in was a pretty big yeah. deal yeah you know I it mean, was hard to get yes it i know people that get. had three or four hundred championship points yeah. with no first yeah and, and had got a good a, dog. Got a first, very first one I put him in. No kidding. I mean, just, and it ruined me. <laughs> Did you get a big old trophy and everything? Yeah, got a big trophy. Yeah. And it Look, was just, yeah. Because I remember back then, them trophies was a big deal. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's all it was. I, I remember was, when I was younger and I'd see them guys that just had a boatload of trophies or something, you know. And yeah. They didn't care about them. They'd have them stuck. I thought, man, if I could win all that, I'd have mm -hmm. them things displayed all over the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I won that trophy and and uh, uh i probably didn't go to another hunt wanted to go every week but with typical people around where i was at they nobody had no money much yeah you know we just got where, to go to one every now and then where'd you grow up at nikki uh right around a little town called uh hermitage springs tennessee yeah, yeah. it's just they ain't even a post office in it just yeah. a little little town i believe i think i've actually went through it a couple probably. times yeah. but it uh was there a lot of hunters around you? Yeah. When I was a kid, there was a lot of hunters. We went to a UKC hunt. They'd be 40 to 60 dogs. Really? You know, I mean, just, I actually, once I learned a little bit about it, I, I didn't go to but two or three a year to hunt. But back then, you had non-hunting judges and night champions. Yeah. I had some pretty good hunting for the area, and I, uh, uh judged and guided night champion cast yeah. as a kid i mean yeah. i didn't know nothing but that's how i learned the rules really was judging these guys that had good dogs that's what i tell all these up and comers you know if you're it doesn't take very many casts to participate in before you ought to pack a scorecard around yeah that's you know? that's how i really started i hunted like i say two or three hunts a year just yeah. if we had the money or something i'd go to one but i i judge and got a lot of those yeah. i hunted with some it was a dog called cowboy Vern was a big winner mm -hmm. and uh, around our area, there were some guys, some uh, Don Bundy. He he's he's hunted a lot of hunts. He yeah. had some Barnes boys that yeah. hunted, and I judged them guys. You know, and watched them make grands, yeah. and, and I really learned the rules and how to win by judging yeah. these guys. Of course, yeah. I wasn't doing much, just packing a scorecard. Yeah. But they had to have non-hunting judges yep. back in yep. and night champions. What uh, you said your dad got you started? Did he hunt much in the hunts? Or? I never, Daddy. My dad drank a lot. Just mm -hmm. it's what he was. You know, he liked to drink. So he hunted a lot when he was younger. As he got older, he didn't really do all that much yeah. hunting. When yeah. I started coon hunting, 
he didn't go with me much. Like I say, I hunted a year pretty much by myself. Yeah. You know, he, he worked, done his thing, and I go coon hunting every night. Didn't treat no coons, but <laughs> went. And uh, then I got that dog trained coons, and he did. He liked to go with me some. Yeah. You know, he'd go, and he liked to get a six pack of beer and drink beer yeah. while I was walking to the dogs, which worked out good for both of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I reckon but, so. Yeah. What, uh, when did you first start? Because you, you was doing the little UKC hunt stuff around there, and you seen them good dogs go. Mm-hmm. And, and when did you start hunting for money? When did the PKC hunts come around? I started hunting PKC. I actually become a member, I think, in 96, which that's about the year I got married. Yeah. And I went to one or two. Yeah. You know, I didn't go to many. Same kind of deal, you know. Didn't really have the money to yeah. go to a bunch of hunts, but – Went to a few, and same thing, Got I went to a few bigger UKC hunts. I'd go to, I went to Autumn Oaks once or mm-hmm. twice, and went to Winter Classic, a few of those bigger hunts, and when I really got hooked on PKC, I, I'd hunted two or three, but I went to, uh, was going to Autumn Oaks, and I think the Labor Day Classic was that same yeah, week, yeah. and my uncle, my uncle and my cousin really got me into the competition. That's my dad's uncle, my right. great uncle. They hunted a lot of hunts. I mean, they, he was up there around Russ Beller, and yeah. he had a buddy named Vanny Griggs that done a lot of hunting, yeah. and, and I was around them quite a bit once I started hunting with them, but I was going to Autumn Oaks, and Comer said, we'll run over. I went up there a night or two early. He said, we'll go over a Thursday night to the Labor Day Classic. I said, let's go. Me and Comer and my cousin and another cousin went over there, and I drawed one of my cousins, and we drawed uh, Stanley ain't Nichols. That, ain't that always how it works? You drive six yeah. hours to a yeah. hunt and you yeah. draw the guy you rode with? Oh, yeah, and we was, we was, got over there and was pretty excited. You yeah. know, Labor Day Classic was a big deal yeah. back then, especially, and I drawed uh, Stanley Nichols. That's the first time I met him. Uh, I forget who else, but anyway, we went out there and had a pretty good coon hunt, and I won my cast. I had... 375, yep. I believe. Just got a cast win. Anyway, I go to uh, Autumn Oaks on Friday night. I won my cast at Autumn Oaks on Friday night with like 800. Didn't get a smell. Didn't get a, didn't get a smell back then. I <laughs> went back to the Labor Day on Saturday, won my cast again, and scored, I think, 475 or five yep. and a quarter, got in the final four. I don't know. I won eight, nine hundred dollars Yep. yep. And that's when I flipped. Yeah, I and mean, that was when you decided there I've not hunted a lot of UKC hunts since then. Yeah. Just a few locals, you know. I know Autumn Oaks, and it's changed some. I know that they've changed the format around a little bit, and the scores seem to be a little more yeah. reasonable, well, you yeah, know, here they, lately. But there for a while, man, there were guys scoring 18, 25, 2,000. I mean, give yeah. me a break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like I say, you go – my uncle lived right in between Autumn Oaks – and mm-hmm. where the Labor Day Classic was, you go to Autumn Oaks, score 800, don't get a smell. Yep. Go down here and score 475 and win round a grand, yep. you know. So it was pretty obvious, yeah. you know, what where year, I needed to be. What year was that, you think, Nikki? That roughly? was probably 98, 99, yep. somewhere in that neighborhood. Were the dogs that you drew at Autumn Oaks a different style of dogs than what you were drawing at PKC? Yeah, huh? they was. Yep. I, I Actually, I drawed. That year, I drawed a really good, supposed to have been a really good blue dog. Uh, I think his name Northern Blue Levi. Yeah, yeah. I think a Ron Taylor. Yep. And I drawed, uh, of course, he's a legend, Dean Mil- uh What's his name? The one that done the article. He hunted blue dogs, too. Mm-hmm. I, I can't think of his name. Uh, he's a, he, he was a big guy in UKC. Yeah. Uh, I drawed him hunting a dog called Spanky. I draw some really good stuff. Yeah. But I actually won my cast pretty easy. You know, yeah. I mean and and I can say I was green back then. Yeah. I mean, all I knowed really, I knew my dog because we hunted a lot, but basic rules is all I yeah. know, you know, and that's but I had pretty good luck. But that Labor Day classic worked me. Where'd you go? What dog was you hunting at the Labor Day Classic that year? I had a dog, uh his name was Bill. He was actually a Probably one of the first crossbreds. Really, we had a set of UKC papers stuck on him, but <laughs> he uh, <laughs> he was a crossbreed. You know, is what he was. Uh, he didn't bark much on the ground. Just a big hunting dog. Yeah. He was one of the first few around my area that got by theirself a lot. Yeah. He wasn't hardly tree with a dog, but he's real accurate and yeah. just he fit perfect in in, in, PKC in PKC at the time. Yeah, yeah he did. 
Sound like he fit all right in UKC too. He did. He's the first dog I ever sold. I sold him to a guy named Tommy Vivian up around uh, Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Yeah. I think I sold him to him for five fifty-five, something yeah, in that neighborhood, that's which was good. a buku of money yeah, for that's me. That's a lot of money back then. Yeah, it was a lot for a dog. Mm -hmm. What dog did you move on to after that? Uh, I had a dog. I actually had a dog at the same time. We called him Buford. He's probably the first real good dog I ever had. He. He didn't work real good in the hunts. I won a lot with him because he treed coons, mm -hmm. but he wouldn't tree with a dog much. If they covered him, he'd leave. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the first one I run in PKC was a dog named Turkey Creek Roscoe. He uh, the, really the first year that I pushed the hunts, he was a uh, stone silent. I mean, really? I, I'm notorious. Nicky I got Hale Barkers. Pack it, pack it a stone <laughs> silent dog. I got Barkers, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm notoriously had quiet dogs I, yeah. I really like quiet dogs just to be honest about it but anyway he was stone silent but he was i hated him with a passion he'd back some when he didn't need to uh make some slicks yeah. but when you got on one of those cast of tree coons they couldn't nothing beat him tree coons he, well, what's your coon population down like down there you guys probably ain't got we a got a lot of coons yeah. i mean we got coons where I hunt because I don't kill many. Right. We don't kill very few coons. Yeah. But really, we're not. We got more now than we've ever had. Yeah. But we don't got a lot of coons. Nothing like up here. When did you uh, see? So you went from Roscoe that was stone silent. When yeah. did when did you start hunting the dogs that opened good? Um, the first I had a dog. When it put me on the map, really, was a dog called Stylish Pete. Yeah. He he was the first super steak dog I ever had. Uh, I got into PKC a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I seen I could do it, you know, for yeah. one thing. I That first year, I think I finished fifth in the state of Kentucky, which was at that time, that was hard people run, you know. It was wasn't do. like it is now. But uh, I went from Roscoe to Pete. First dog I'd ever give, it, and it wasn't a lot of money, but it was a lot to me. I gave two grand for him yeah. when he was like six, seven months old. Yeah. But he was, honestly, everybody says this, I know, but he was what everybody tries to train nowadays. Yeah. I mean, he was the big mouth, big hunting, never backed. I didn't never, I don't, I don't train him to back. Yeah. But he didn't back. Had a coon probably 85% of the time. Uh, he's a winner. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's one that I turned down. I mean, like I say, I'm broke. I went to the super stakes, took him to the super stakes when he was a senior. I had enough money to pay one entry and get home. <laughs> <laughs> got him in. Uh, J.C. Ellis offered me thirty grand for him, and which was like hitting the lottery. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I know what I was going to do. I was wanting to hunt, so I yeah. couldn't sell my dog. And uh, I wound up winning about thirty thousand with him. So you got you got thirty thousand. Yeah, either all together, to I won right at thirty grand with him. We bred him up quite a. Bit. That's one yeah. my line of dogs. I mean, I've been hunting that line yeah. since him. I've I've actually hunted six generations of them that I've raised right there at the house yep. and made coon dogs out yep. of, and one with them. And you say J.C. Ellis offered you that money and you ended up winning 30 grand with him. 30 grand back then wasn't like 30 grand. No, I it wanted- It was hard to make biggest, a dog a platinum champion. At the Super Stakes that year, I wound up getting third and won $7,500. That's the most money I won with yep. him. So you figured all. twenty three grand, and the little people don't understand. A lot of that money was seventy two dollars at a time, and a thirty dollars. What even seventy two, sixty? Yeah, yeah. They didn't have thirty dollars on it. They had twenty five dollars on it back then. Yeah, mo most of it was that. I did win a lot of. I I load up, went to a hunt. I, yeah. I got in most most of them. So there were some pro hunts going on back then. Yeah, too. I won a pro hunt yeah. with him. Got in one year when I first started running pro hunts. I think I actually went to. Maybe five or six yeah. pro hunts and got into semifinals every one of them. Yeah. Won the last one. While Josh and Nikki are reloading for the second half of this podcast, I want to tell you guys about some sponsors and I want to tell you why we choose our sponsors and how we choose our sponsors. We only go after the top gear in the industry. Seriously. I don't want to sell you junk. And if I tell you that it's good stuff, it's because I've used it and I believe in it. And our team uses it, and we believe in it. One of those companies that I believe in is Dogs Are Treed. They sell a product called Dogs Are Hydrated. Every one of you I know is looking for an edge, either for the late round or maybe you got beat in the early round the night before and you got to hunt tomorrow night. Dogs Are Hydrated is scientifically based to give your dog a performance edge. 
Proper hydration is crucial to performance. Check out Dogs Are Hydrated at dogsartreed.com. Enter the promo code HXP20% off and you will get 20% off of your entire order. Our hats are there. They've got paws are protected. Their leashes and their tie-outs are the best in the industry. You're not going to wear them out. The last year lifetime. Check out Dogs Are Treed at dogsartreed.com. Another company that I believe in because I use their products is Cajun Lights. I used a Cajun Light years ago. L.W. Nixon bought the company a few years ago, and he revolutionized how he does business at Cajun Lights. Their lights are outstanding. I've been extremely satisfied with them. L.W. is going to work hard to earn your business. And you can find Cajun Lights at CajunLights.com. Check them out. Before we get back into the dogs, I want to talk about the pro hunts a little bit because I started... I've been a member since 2001, and I don't think my first pro hunt was until 2013 or 14, maybe. I think I finally got an entry over here at uh, La Plata to that pro hunt. Yep. And I was a nervous wreck. Yep. I'm thinking this is a $300, I think it was $250 then. Yep. $250 entry, and there's guys like you and and all these guys that I see winning all the time. You know, I'm thinking, what am I doing over here? Yep. Yep. And the pro hunts were the creme de la creme everybody traveled to the pro hunts mm-hmm. if you had a pro hunt in missouri there are people from michigan there's people from louisiana there's people from south carolina yep. kentucky i mean everybody that that had a good dog would go to those pro hunts yep and that's kind of fell off here recently with all the pro classics mm-hmm. and, the, and the bigger events and stuff you know and i just i know you feel the same way but i just wish we could get that back yeah we won't ever get you it don't back. think so no they, Pro Classics has yeah. done away with the Pro Hunts. Yeah. Pro Hunts then, like you said, was the hunt. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing you could go to and win four grand. Yeah. Besides the super stakes of now, the world. Now the entries are four grand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the kicker to it, which I'm I'm glad it's – I mean, I, I miss the Pro Hunts, but to me this hunt took took the place of the Pro Hunt, yeah. this truck hunt. Yeah. Or, or a, a $2,500 entry fee hunt. Yeah. You know, that's what took the place of the pro hunts. And when you talk about the truck hunt, just so the folks know, we're here at the uh, Pro Sport Truck Series hunt in yep. Mercer, Missouri. You yep. got up in last night. We'll talk yep. about up a little bit later and what he's out of and stuff. So congratulations to you, first of all. Yeah, but appreciate you. You look, you look around and, you know, those pro hunt guys are at this hunt. Mm-hmm. You know, we're here in Missouri and yep. you're here from Tennessee and there's folks from Georgia and yep. South Carolina and from up in northern Iowa and all that stuff, you know. So I guess, but it's just it's just not a pro hunt. You know what I mean? No, no, it ain't. <laughs> and I guess I sound like everybody else wanting to bring back the old days, you know, even though it really wasn't that old. It was just, you know, three or four or five years ago, everybody was still yeah. at a pro hunt, yeah. you know. Yeah. But anyway, back back to the dogs. He's hunting Pete. And you said you were six generations off of Pete. What, mm-hmm. what pup did you hunt out of Pete first? Uh, the first things we, the first litter of pups we raised out of him, uh, Jeff Atwood on the female out of Silver Dollar Stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was full course. When you got a dog like that in an area that I'm from, you got a lot of jealousy in places. Yes, My sir. area ain't like that. Really? Really, it ain't. It, we, the guys are hunting around our area, they'll jump aboard with somebody trying to do something a little different yeah and when i bred pete everybody he he didn't have nobody that didn't like everybody like people didn't like me still like yeah. pete you know and everybody wanted these pups and uh i i of course i kept one of them i actually kept two of them but a buddy of mine lived right up the road got one never hunted no hunts he was the first one got us hunting pups out of him he'd never been to no hunts his little female Went to Trin Coons first. He went right to putting her in the hunts. Yeah. Went to winning with her. I really? mean, she ain't even really yeah. ready for him. But, of course, when he went to winning, then I want to hunt one and go to winning. And then uh, a buddy that was hunting with me three or four nights a week at the time, Chad Evitz, he got one out of the litter that we raised there, called him Gus, which me and Chad hunted every night. We, yeah. we, we trained him and another one called Banker. All of them won. All four of them out of that litter either – they either made grand or night champion, yeah. and all of them either made champion or, or gold or platinum. Yeah. But uh, anyway, how we wind up getting Smirnoff. Smirnoff's kind of the probably the best one out of that yeah. line. Pete got stole at the World Hunt in, I 
think 2006 maybe, got stole out of the dog box. No kidding. And I had him super staked and all that. So, I didn't even know that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got stole out of the box. It was a pretty big deal at that time. Yeah. Like I say, I was doing a lot of winning. We was breeding a few females. You know, I I didn't really I wouldn't consider him a stud dog, but a lot yeah. of people did because we we he had two or three hundred pups on the ground yeah. and and all of them was winning. People was coming from everywhere to breed to him. Of course, money wasn't a big ain't never been a big deal to me. I'd breed for a pup or mm -hmm. nothing. It didn't matter, you know. So I got a lot bred a lot of good good females, yeah. and he had a lot of good pups on the ground. These people today still calls me. Yep. know if we got semen collected yep. and yep. things on him, which that we didn't, but. Uh, Anyway, we got that first litter, and uh, they were just all really good dogs. Every one of them made good coon dogs, all four of them. And we bred another female. Two or three out of that litter done yeah. good. Bred some more. I mean, they was good ones out of every litter. But uh, Pete got stole at the world, and when I finally give up on him, I had him super staked, and uh, we just I decided to swap everything over on Gus. We was wanting to breed Gus a mm -hmm. little bit. So we just, and you could do it back then. If you had one sired yeah. and he'd something happened to him, you just swap it over. Yeah. So we did, and the first litter of pups we raised out of Gus, uh, we bred a little rat female Jeff Atwood had. We'd done bred her to Pete and got some good pups. Yeah. But we went ahead and bred her to Gus, and uh, that's where Smirnoff yeah. come in. And same thing, you know, I went on, started winning with Smirnoff. Won a lot with Smirnoff. You won a lot. Yeah, and he... Uh, we raised the first litter of pups out of him. Uh, we bred a little old female, and uh, I'm trying to think what pup it was. We kept a pup out of that litter called Bud Light. Yep, I remember that though. And same thing, got him in the super stakes. I think got second or third with him, and got third. Yeah, got third. Yep. Uh, bred Bud. Got a good litter of pups. He's one of the best coon dogs around our area right now is out of Bud. Yeah. We raised him right there. Uh, is Bud still around? No, Bud got killed. He got run over and got killed Did when he was three. I didn't we, know just that. right after the Super Stakes. Yeah. We got third in the Super Stakes, and he got killed just yeah. right after it. But uh, And then we we got a female, first female out of Smirnoff. It was a little female we still got. Her name was Lou. Uh, we bred her to... Uh, Jigs. Yep. That's the cross I'd been waiting on was yep. to make a Smirnoff Jigs cross. Bred her to Jigs and got Bigfoot. Yep. And now we're breeding Bigfoot. Bigfoot's a good one. He's won 10, 12,000. Yep. We've done real good with him. Uh, we've got a really good pup out of him right now. Good. It was a one-year-old spring. So that's kind of where it's all went. Yep. It's just stepped down the line. As far as the style of them dogs, as you kept going on through the generations, did it pretty much stay the same? Because I know Smirnoff not. was the only yeah. oddball of really? the bunch. He really, really was a exception to the dogs. Yeah. He was mouthy. Yeah. You know, he's you. He's where I started out with some yeah. alley stuff. I'd always had quiet stuff, yeah. but he struck right there. He yeah. struck at the house when you got him stuck in the dog box. Yeah. I mean, that's just him. He didn't shut up. He was a he was more what I think you have to have to compete consistently yeah. because he, he could he could coon dog you to death tonight, and then he could me to you to death yeah. tomorrow night. You know, if he was off. He was good about being where the coons yeah. was at, and that's kind of what I like. Yeah, and I got the pleasure of hunting with Knopf a few times. And what I liked about him is he had so much heart, Nicky. Mm -hmm. That dog just wanted to go coon hunting so bad all the time. He's like Meltdown. Yeah. He loved these hunts. Yes, that dog loved, loved them more than I did. Yeah. I mean, he loved to compete. Yeah, and you couldn't – I mean – I seen him and Dollar roll around one night, and he just got chewed to shreds and off did, and he still wanted to go, and he yep. still wanted to compete. Yep. And I'm thinking, man, this dog, <laughs> one thing yeah, about Knopf, that Knopf's got a heart. He wasn't a real, he wasn't the type of dog that you would normally say had heart. Yeah. I, I really didn't, I wouldn't have really put him in that category till he got a little age on him, yep. because he wasn't a high energy, real athletic. Yeah. You know, most of you dogs that you consider have heart, I think we confuse heart with ignorance. Right. I do. I mean, that's I really – I, I agree. There's I dogs agree. that's – most of them that's got that heart is just like a racehorse. They're too dumb, horse, they're too dumb to know better. Yeah, yeah, they're just ignorant. 
But if you get one that's got brains in heart, yeah. it's totally different. And that's what Smirnoff was. And he, you know just as well as I do, those are hard to find. Because mm-hmm. the more brains they got and the more yep. they know what's going on around them, yep. the harder it is to keep them going long term. It is. I mean, it's just like up. Yeah. A lot of his stuff, he looked horrible last night. Yeah. It's his mind working. It yeah. wasn't really – he's got heart too, but it, it – it wasn't his night, and he yeah. knowed it. You know, he yeah. was kind of like me. He wished he was in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably be wishing that later <laughs> on tonight. But I don't know, just like you said last night, because, you know, up tree that coon and that log. And then them dog, and it was people don't understand. A lot of guys look at these scorecards at the end of the mm-hmm. night. What up when was zero? He ended up zero. With zero. 200, 200 plus, minus, 200 plus. plus. Yep. And they think, man, that dog there just did this, and these dogs can't do that. It was rough last night. It was. It was. We more... turned loose in a driving rain, yep. 35 mile an hour winds, mm-hmm. cold. Uh, the coons had moved before that storm come down, and we've already hunted an early round. These dogs were wore out. They've mm-hmm. been in the dog box for two or three hours, and we yep. cut them loose into this thunder and lightning rain yep. and nightmare. Yep. And so it's not always easy. Mm-mm. But. I know Up had a little hiccup last night as far as he just, he was off. You yeah. know, but all them yep. dogs was off. Yep. I mean, Jimmy Meinzel's hunting a really good dog. Mm-hmm. I've seen that Duke dog do a lot of good work. He didn't even want to hunt in that storm. Mm-hmm. No, they were so, all pretty much done. You don't see it from the outside looking in. When people are looking at scorecards on Facebook, they don't understand what no. that cast was actually like. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's pretty bad. But, but hey, I, you'll take it however you can get it, hey, won't guys, you? Like I said last <laughs> night, I think you got to win one like that to win a yeah. truck. Yeah. But, hey, he did whatever he needed to do, yep. and he come out with a cast win. Yep. That's about all we can ask out of him. Yep. And one thing I do like about Up is talk about we've talked about athletic and long and, and yep. good looking. That dog's. Yeah, he's athletic. Yeah, he is. He is. He's athletic. And I, let's get into him real quick. And I want to talk about some others, and we want to talk about Meltdown, too. But Up is the only living male out of Meltdown. No, he was the first living. First I actually living bred. Male. The, the one I told you, Lou, out yeah. of Smirnoff, I bred the Jigs and got yeah. Bigfoot. We bred her to Meltdown and got two pups. Okay. I've got one. I, we call him Downtime. Yeah. How old's he? He's a two-year-old father. Two-year-old. What's he like? No, we're off he's more like bit. Meltdown. Is he? Truthfully, he is. He's he's a uh, struck right here yeah. most of the time. Wild. I mean, he's wild. A lot yeah. wilder hunting dog than Smir- or Up is. Yeah. Uh, a little more accurate than up. I mean, usually up's off. Wasn't like last night. Usually, if he's off, he'll make a slick or yeah. two here and there. He he, downtime's more. He's more accurate normally. I mean, he can make some slicks, but he's more accurate normally. Just flies through the country. Yeah. Little junkier. You know, yeah. he's just a little more. He's a little more gamey. Yeah. You know, I think up lacks a little bit of that. If he had, he's always been pretty much dead straight since he was a baby. Up, I don't know. We probably won everything around 100 gram of, yeah. you know but we hunted him in some you know really fortunate to get yeah. to hunt these hunts i've got a really good partner in new york pete olivia mm-hmm. and he makes it to where i can go to some of these bigger hunts and we hunted up in some when he was just a pup that really we was in a spot where we we go to him we was in a spot where we really didn't have a dog ready but still wanted to go yeah and he's He's running a deer or, or a fox or something from from having a hundred thousand one in PKC. Yeah, because he didn't have no downtime as a puppy. He treated coons or doing puppy stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he needed to have been running a deer a little bit yeah. here and there, but he never never. He did just do went it. straight from being a pup to being in a cage. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So he, but he treated coons good enough as a puppy to win. He yeah. just he didn't have nothing to keep him out of trouble. He's mouthy when he was a puppy, which he ain't like that no more, yeah. really. But he'd be struck for a hundred. I I remember I lost a cast with him as a twenty five hundred dollar entry fee. I've got it won. I mean, I just can't take a minus. Five six minutes left in the hunt. I mean, I've got it won. East tree two coons look good for a puppy. Yeah. wasn't fifteen months old. Yeah. He comes in. Ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing doing nothing. He comes in, and when he comes in, he can't shut. He couldn't shut up back in. <laughs> He comes over and rires up on me, want me to pet on him, barks four or five times. I got to strike him, looking at him eyeball to eyeball. Take 100 minus. Cost me getting in the final four of a $2,500 entry fee. Who won that cast? Do you remember it? Uh, no. I can't. I really can't remember. Because <laughs> I've never been given a gift like that. If I just keep at it, I think one of these days. I remember Randy up. Morgan was on the cast, but he done quit and left. I tell you who won it. The first, 
the first guy that hunted for Ike Rainey, Jeremy Dial was yep. his name. He's yep. the first one that really went to hunting for yep. Ike. Yep. He, he was hunting, uh, I don't even remember the dog he was hunting, but that, that's how you won. <laughs> you just got to kind of shake your head. Oh, you know, I, didn't, it, it's a I didn't get shook yeah. about it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's my fault, you yeah. know, for having him out there. He yeah. wasn't really ready. He, he treated coons good enough, but he yeah. wasn't really ready. One thing about it, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, is is valuable semen pups that are bred and raised and the litter gets blown up and then they never see the woods. Yeah. And we were just talking last night about what Up's litter mate sister sold for. And it was, of course, it was a benefit auction and stuff too, but yeah. 12500 I believe, yeah. is what the number yeah, was. Yeah, that's what she brought for sure. Her yeah. eyes was open. Yes. And so this is a wean puppy. Yep. That, and you took up, who at that time was the only male out, yep. of, out of down, who we're going to talk about down a little later, arguably the greatest competition coon hound ever. Mm-hmm. You, know, yep. you know, I mean, that, that argue, argument can be mm-hmm. made. I know he's always impressed us. And you took up and you hunted him. Yeah. I mean, you turned him loose. You got yep. him going. You raised him from a baby puppy. And now here you are $100,000 later. Yeah. And so not very many people would have done that, Nicky. No. Well, I could have got a lot, a lot of money yeah. out of him. I've turned down ignorant money for him like he is. Yeah. But like I say, money just – money's – and I ain't got none. I ain't yeah. one of those dudes that's got money and say money ain't nothing. Yeah. But it don't really mean that much yeah. to me. I agree. I'm, in, I'm with you in the same boat. I'd rather have a good dog. Yeah. But I, I sell a bunch of them. Yeah. But I've, oh, al- yeah. I've also never found a good dog that I really wanted yeah. to keep forever. Well, I just – I. <laughs> I do this, and I think not having money kind of helps me a little bit yeah. because I know I can't just go buy one. Yeah. And I've really, truly never bought one. We bought some dogs, don't get me wrong, but I've never bought one that I was invested in enough yeah. to want to push like I do these. If you're like me, and don't get me wrong, I love handling for Jed, and I like Jed's dogs. You know, yeah. I like Rain, and I like Scent, and I like Bella, you know, them dogs yeah. that I've handled for Jed. But if I didn't like them, I wouldn't do it because I don't care. Just like last night, I don't mind. I mean, if Jed wants to handle late, yeah. that's fine. I ain't trying to go out there and win that truck too bad. Yeah. But there's something about, you know, when I raise Duds or Con or, or Delta or one of these females or one of them dogs, you know, and there's something about winning with them yeah. that just makes you feel better than just being a handler. Yeah, that's you right. Know? And so I assume you're in the same boat with I that. I am. Yeah, I've never, I've never really... I couldn't ever really get into just handling. Yeah. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with it. And I, you know, I've done it, but I couldn't put as much into it, I don't think. Right. So I don't, that's the reason I've never really got into it. You know I know, I mean? like when I was handling Bella and Jed said, well, we need to get her. I said, well, let her, let me take her. Let me get her ready. Let me do all the leg work and the footwork. Cause then when I win, I feel better. About yeah. It. Yeah. Now, circumstances have changed and I'm a busy guy and I got two small children to raise and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, I'm not gonna lie. Taking letting Jed get rain ready and yeah. then me taking her through the weekend ain't too bad either. You know, no. I, I I enjoy that as well. But yeah. So you got up and you got him going and everything. And how he came about is kind of an interesting story because you were able to purchase meltdown. Yeah. Late in his career. Yeah. Me and Pete. Yeah. And you and Pete got meltdown. How old was he when you got him? I think he was five, coming six. Yeah. I I can't remember exactly when his birthday was, but he was right around five and six. And at that time. He was the winningest dog of all time, I believe, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, of course, everybody knows what Dustin done with the dog yeah. and how he done it. And you took him, and what did you see out of him immediately when you first started hunting him after you owned him? Uh, honestly, I mean, he's just – I hunted with him quite a bit, mm-hmm. you know, when Dustin had him and I always liked him. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, he was – he's competitive, but – him and Smirnoff was no kin, yeah. but they were actually more alike than Jig. Of course, I had Jigs there too until yeah. he died. And Jigs was a, uh, he was just a coon dog. He was just, he was just, I got a cousin that I hunted with my whole life, care less about these hunts. Yeah. He coon up by himself 300 nights a year and loved it. That's kind of what Jigs was. He yeah. just liked to coon hunt. Uh, he win because he couldn't help it. I mean, mm-hmm. he was, Jigs was just such a good dog, you know, he, he couldn't help but win. Meltdown, love to go to these coon yeah. hunts. I mean, he, to me, he didn't really do it for me at the house, yeah. you know, coon hunting. He he would have never done what he'd done if I'd have had him. Right. Because I couldn't put up with him around yeah. the house. You know, he just, 
he he just like I say run all the time and he'd be running in there a mile make a circle and come right back he when I first got him he'd be a mile in there running I was hunting his sister uh, half sister to him old Dixie and uh first week or two there he'd be on the side by side right beside me going into her tree <laughs> yeah. i never done nothing to him yeah. I, when i got him I, I didn't know if i'd win with him or what yeah. but i was gonna give him a different lifestyle i i didn't care if he won or if he didn't win because yeah. i didn't have to hunt him i had stuff to hunt he was just uh i was i just felt really blessed to have him yeah. because you know i mean meltdown that's exactly. the way i look at yeah. it i mean it's meltdown yeah and uh but once i put him in a few casts you know i got to see I got to see what he was, and yeah. he he was a he was a bad dude. I mean, people don't understand how difficult because there wasn't these big hunts when Meltdown first started coming up, and when he was hot, really there wasn't any sixty. There's what one sixty five hundred dollar entry hunt a year, yeah. and that was still pretty late in his career. Yeah, but you'd see him at the Lone Star, and he'd hunt Monday through Friday, and then be at that Pro Classic on Saturday. And then he'd go somewhere else, and he may hunt thirty dollars hunts, yes. fifty. That dog, how many casts that did that dog would participate in? Yeah, and then he would still win. Yeah, I never mean, seen it's amazing. Like it. Him and Jig both was like, yeah, yeah. I don't see how, I don't see how he held up like he did. I don't either. I know how because he loved it. Yeah. I mean, just like me, I don't see how I've held up like I have. No. I mean, I love these hunts. Yeah, you know, but that dog loved to go compete in these coon hunts. Yeah, and I've talked to Dustin about getting him on the podcast just to talk about Meltdown, and we're going to do that one of these days. Yep. But he was just, gosh dang, he was impressive. And I'm a lot like you, you know, it's Meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I see it in Ruby too. I love hunting with Ruby, mm-hmm. and, you know, I give her a little bit more credit, even when Ruby's looking bad or something like that, which yeah. I've seen her do. We've all seen her do. And win. Know? And still, yeah, she could still do yeah. that and win. But uh, they're just, they're impressive animals. Yep. But what... You go from meltdown to up, and you say you got these pups and stuff like that. What do you got in the future? You gonna you gonna start working on downtime? You gonna start putting him in well, some more hunt, bigger hunts? Yeah, or? we're working on him pretty yeah. hard. We, we we he's he's gonna. I got a good friend that hunts with me a lot. That Charlie Fry's his name. Yeah. He care less about owning a dog. You know, he just he likes to do the same thing yeah. we do, but but he care less about that. And he, he right now he's hunting him and. He's got him looking really good. I good. mean, he, probably what I should have brought up here, really. Yeah. He's more compared. He's more like Meltdown. He's, yeah. he's the same style as Meltdown. You uh, say there's two of them. He got a sister, too. Yeah, we got it? her, too. Yeah, what's yeah. she like? She's not near as far along. She, I, I got a real good friend in South Car- or North Carolina, Charles Stroud. Me and him's big buddies. And when they was born, like I say, I could have sold them, but I, <laughs> to me it's worth more – to give him let a friend have something yeah. like that you know so i let charles have her and and he got her kind of at a tough time and he wasn't hunting like he normally he's normally one of the hardest hunters i ever met but he wasn't hunting hard and he didn't have time to mess with her and he sent her to a good friend of mine to start her he started her last year she got a real late start yeah. but free the free the crap out of a coon yeah. i mean she's got a real mouth good tree dog by herself uh she's a trailing type dog Does she bark quite a bit she barks good but yeah. she's not a mouthy dog yeah she's she's about like a just yeah. gonna get struck pretty good but you know not automatic yeah i say i noticed up off the recut last night and a lot of them dogs you know are not as good as strike dogs off i always get mad at jed for not turning his phone off and here i am with mine ringing but uh I noticed up. He opened good out of the truck, yeah. and then he was pretty quiet. You know, yeah, he's not. Night. He didn't. He didn't bark. It's not like he, he started. Struck. When he started out, he was mouthier than up. Yeah. Than, than down was. That's I what mean, you told me. Because I remember when he, he was. A, you had a video of him on the Ranger or oh, something like man. that on the side by side. He was that way from the time you got him out of the pen till you got him put back yeah. up. But uh, and he didn't start out just dead independent either. Up didn't he'd back a little bit. Yeah. And just and and I never. I don't break them from backing. If they back too much, I just move them on. I'm yeah. not. I, I don't get no enjoyment out of shocking and beating dogs. Yeah. I just – they got to do what I want them to do naturally, and then I'll break them from little stuff. Yeah. But he was mouthy. I had, I had people that come <laughs> go hunt with me, and they say, I won't be back until you hunt something different. They, I mean, people didn't even want to hunt with him. And I, and I wasn't going to mess with his barking because I don't like it, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's a weapon. So, But as I got to hunting up, 
he uh, started getting independent. Yeah. You know, he started where he didn't want to be with dogs. And when he done that, just naturally quietened down. Yeah. You know, he just he quit the barking. A He's still mouthy because yeah. I ain't never broke him like around a truck. Yeah. And, People think, gosh, I'm gonna have to hear this all night, you know. But once well, you cut him loose, that's what I was thinking last night. Whenever yeah, he cut loose, <laughs> he <laughs> treed know? three nights ago. He treed three coons. He barked on the he, the first two he treed was stone silent, never yeah. barked on the ground, and then maybe barked ten times. On does the he third. bark? Does he bark less when he's by himself? No, about the same. Yeah, about the yeah, same. About the same. He's, I know Con was stone silent, but he turned him loose. And with dogs, he turned him loose by himself. He barked quite a bit. Yeah, no, it's about the same. Yeah. He's, He's, he's pretty much the same. Well, Nikki, we've been at her for a while. Uh, is there anything you want to add? Mm, not really. Man, I tell you what, I, I'm rooting for you tonight. <laughs> well, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, have hope, to... I hope it's you and Jed and my brother in the finals. Yeah, I think that would be yeah, a good I'd one. Love to, love one, to thing, one other thing I did want to talk about is we had a fantastic – I mean, the weather sucked. Yeah. And we had a fantastic cast last night yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you were judging, I was guiding, and I walked along with you guys. Mostly I wanted to see the dogs going, plus there's some rough stuff in there. I wanted to make sure you guys got around in. But you get on social media and you see some of these things about all the cheating and all of this and all of that, and I just don't see it. No. You know, I mean, most of them casts, 99 out of 100 casts are going to be just like we had last night. A lot of your cheating somebody might think it's cheating and it ain't cheating exactly you know i mean it's a game this yeah. is a game we play i yeah. don't care how you look at it a lot of people a lot of people will, will judge a guy judge his character by what he'll do out here on this cast yeah you can't do that no. i mean you just can't do it i, I mean i always say it's a team sport it is I, i'm there to give every advantage to my dog that I can if give you. If you ain't willing to do that, then then you're not supposed you to be. You don't need to be here because and you need to understand that the other handlers are going to do that too. And, and everybody's got different circumstances. Yeah. You know, I mean, every, some people some people need to win. Yeah. <laughs> when, when money's involved and you need to win, yeah. You know, you can say what you want to. You're till you get put in that position, you don't yeah. know really what you'll do. But I, I know old Mike Fields. I'm going to give him some credit on this podcast last night, but. We were sitting there, and in my mind, we still should have been standing there at that bottom of that hill when that cash ran out. I mean, I was, to me, at that moment, I felt like I was out yeah. of the hunt. My dog wasn't doing nothing like he yeah. normally does. He wasn't into it. I wasn't into it. But still, I've got to judge it yep. Yep. the same, you know. And, and I told Mike, I said, we got no business going up yeah. there. Because no. nobody – That dog wasn't struck. That last dog yeah. that was barked was right down here mm. to the right of us, which was mine. When the six got him, we ain't got no reason to walk no. up there, really. No. I mean, I didn't care to walk up there, but yeah. I don't know what you know why why we would other than we know Des up there. Yeah. I mean, that was just – According to our garments, yeah. you know. But That was just, I guess, sportsmanship on Mike's part, you know. Yeah. He said, let's just go up there. And, and like I say, I don't – I ain't going to say we wouldn't have. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, they kind of got back over in yeah. there. We might have eventually got up there, you yeah. know, and had to hurt something. When mine actually got to doing something, yeah. he had a lot better mouth than yeah. the little dog, the Perman boy, was yeah. hunting. Didn't have no mouth. You know, if he'd had any mouth, yeah, we'd have hurt, we'd have hurt yeah. him up there because he just didn't have no mouth. And, and, uh, but I wouldn't have walked up there, yeah. I, and I wasn't going to. I mean, no, I, I told them straight up, yeah. hey, we really ain't got no business going up there unless y'all want to. Yeah. You know, if everybody wants to, I'm fine with it. I'm yeah. basically just a spectator in that yeah. cast. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I ain't walking up there. Not if I'm mine. <laughs> if, I'm, I mean, if I'm winning this cast right now, yeah. I ain't walking up there. Yeah, no. But, Mike, he's a good sportsman. He's always good to yeah. hunt with. And Justin's yeah. been good to hunt with every time I draw him. And yeah. you, of course, yeah. and everybody – Jimmy, yep. Jimmy's dog didn't want to hunt in that storm, so he was already back at the truck. Yep. But most of them cast, that's just how they go. You know, These bigger hunts, I think you have less trouble. Yeah. You know, there's not as much stuff goes on. I agree. But, yeah, it, it was a fun hunt. Yep. Like I say, I don't, I don't really get shook over them. No, I mean, I mine looks mean. bad. I know he's a dog. Everybody can claim they're perfect if they yep. want to. But yeah. I've hunted with most of them that's doing all the winning and – you hunt with a dog long enough, you're going to see it look they bad. They ain't none of them perfect. No, you're going to see it look bad. 
Well, I sure appreciate it, Nikki. And like I said, uh, you've always been good to me, and we've always had enjoyable yeah. times together, and I sure appreciate you sitting down yep. with me. I appreciate you. Uh, we'll get you on here again one of these yep. days. I want to get I want to get you and Dustin on at the same time, and yep. I want to do an hour just on Meltdown. Yep, I know we could, awesome. we could fill a podcast with that dog and then yep. some. I think we could do a three-part series on it, you maybe. You could with, <laughs> yeah. with Meltdown starting with Dustin, that's yep. for sure, from yep. the get-go. Yep. I mean, he's He deserves meltdown. a lot of credit, too. Yeah. And you yep. did well with him, you know, when you got him, too. Yeah. the dog well that's like i say when you me and good, pete got you, him yeah. i told pete when we got him i said that the worth of him's gone yeah i mean truthfully and and who knows if we can win a nickel with him. everybody yeah. said nobody could win with him but dustin and it could have been possible you yeah. know i don't know but we didn't have to win nothing with yeah. him you know that's why i told pete i said hey if we win we win if we don't when you when you and pete bought him and i told Finley was the first thing, first person I talked to, of course, and I said, "Look, you give a good dog to a good dog, man, yep. it's gonna win." Yeah, sure. you know that's just the way it is. Yeah, sure. And you and Dustin are both good dog men, and that You'll dog won. Both figure out what you got to do. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So. But now that dog, I'll be a little different than some people will. I think that dog was going to win as long as someone hauled him. Yeah. I don't think he was just that kind of dog. I don't think there was no training to him. Yeah. I, I, I just don't. I don't. I think he would have won. If somebody that's never trained a dog in their life had yeah. him, if they had load him up and take him to a hunt and just strike him when he barks and yeah. tree him when he trees. He was a special animal. Yeah, he was. For sure. Yep. Uh, Dustin, I mean, drawing him, I've drawn him several times with, with down, and Dustin do stuff that I thought was stupid, mm -hmm. hunting that dog. He'd tree him on a locate sometimes. First time he looked up, he'd tree him. He'd tree for 30 or 40 seconds, get down and leave. And I'm like, what in the world? You know, he used to give his cast yeah. away. Hunt was over. Meltdown make up for <laughs> yeah, it. You know, right. and, and, and that that's the yeah. special part about that dog. Dustin, well, I mean, you blame it on Dustin, blame it on the dog, whatever. He did tree, yeah. Dustin tree, he went on. But in my mind, you're struck for 100. There ain't no sense of getting in no big yeah. area tree, yeah. and, you know. And, but he done it, but he knows, you know. Yeah. I mean, Dustin just knew the dog would – most Ru of the time would Ruby, take care of him. Ruby and Meltdown are two of the dog, only two dogs I've seen that can overcome mistakes like that. Yeah. Consistently. Yep. Yeah. Consistently do. That's right. They they was good at it, yeah. both of them. They were. All right, Nikki. Let's go get us some food and and, and go hunt this miserable weather again tonight. Yeah. What do you hey, think? It'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me, Nikki. And like I said, I always appreciate being with you and around you. So yep. uh, thanks again. Uh, this is Josh McKayla signing off on the Truth on the Houndsman XP Podcast Network. <laughs>